Hi, this is Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. It's good to have you here. So, I've been asked to participate in a collaboration organised by PM Artist Studio. And it's a collaboration where there will be a swap involved. And I've been partnered up with Kerry the Crafter. Now, I have to find three items to send him. He'll use them in a project. And likewise, he will send three items to me. And I'll use those in a project. So I'm about to sit down to pull some things together to send to Kerry. But I thought I'll just bring you along with me. So you won't see this video until the actual collaboration videos have already gone out. But I just thought, you know, you might be interested to see what I do by bringing together three items for Kerry. So the only stipulation is that it fits in a... Three items fit in a six by nine envelope. So I don't have an envelope of that size. I've got a larger one, but I worked out, gosh, that's the birds. Big pigeons, wood pigeons. So if I fold this in half, this measures six by nine. I do not know what they are doing. So I've got two large wood pigeons on the roof of my studio. And it's that time of year, so I think they are courting each other. So, yeah, there might be a little bit of background noise. Anyway, to fit three items into here, so I am going to start on that. The theme of the collab, collab, collaboration is new from old. So I want to try and get three old items, turn them into something a little bit different, not to finish them off, because Kerry that can then do with them what he wants in terms of incorporating them. So let's get started. So I pulled out a cereal box. Funny thing is, I don't eat cereal or not very often, so I have to get these from other people. But while I was looking for that, I came across this. This has just been off a, a, a jotter, a, you know, writing pad. I keep these for using and I realised that that will fit quite nicely into there. And I want to get some texture on this. I'm going to start by, because this is shiny, not so much on this side, I'm going to put a quick coat of PVA glue on it and then I want to build some colour and some texture on this. As I say, not taking it to the final point uh, because it will be up to Kerry to decide what he does with it. So let me just get on with the glue to start with. So I'm going to use my gel plate for a couple of things. I want to get some base colour down on this. I'm going to do some more gel printing pretty soon. Uh, this has got who knows all what on it, but I'm figuring new from old then you know, bits of old paint might come up as well. So get that down. This is dry. I just put glue. That's a little bit wet there. I'll give that another minute. I, this is dry, so I'm just hoping it will allow the paint to stick better to it. Otherwise, it would have absorbed in. So yeah, I've got a couple of wet bits still there. I'll finish drying that off, and then we'll get to gel printing. So I was drawn to doing some kind of what I might call natural colours, so earthy colours, browns, etc. But I think I'm going to go for some blues. So I've got some indigo, just Dela Rowney, the graduate acrylic, and I've got some just hobby craft paint in a turquoise. I think I'm just going to do a little mix of both on here. I really just want a base colour on both sides. And then I'm going to do something else on this side. So let's do a little bit of gel printing. Today ain't coming back mm -hmm. I'm gonna let the past stay in the cold I'll move the sun to the ocean Let its unsaid words be spoken And I'll let my mind be carried by the waves So 
So this will likely take a few coats on this side, so I'm just going to keep working away at that. I don't actually mind if some of this shows through. I'm seeing this as the back of something, and of course Kerry could add to it anyway, so I don't mind if I don't block out everything, but I'm going to give it another couple of coats. See there it's picking up green or something from somewhere before actually I like that and getting a little bit of the dendritic effect which is good too mm. liking it as it is I think I'll put one more coat on it so I'll dry that and then we'll go nice kind of sea colors coming out here So that's largely covered it up, there's not much left on there that you can see through but just enough. So I'm now going to do something similar on this side and I've decided just to leave this rough edge on it, you know, where I pulled it off the, the notepad previously, off the wire spiral binding. So I'm going to do more or less these same colours on the other side. So because I like the little bits of green coming in on the other side, I'm also going to add in some of this Reeves Lime Yellow. Okay, so since this uh, collab's being hosted by PM Artist Studio, I want to use one of their stencils. Now this is one of their older ones, and I was just talking about it the other day, and I've forgotten its name, but I'll put a note to it below. So it doesn't quite cover the whole thing, but I'm just going to place it so that it'll be roughly in the middle, and, you know, a little border all round. And I'm going to use this PBO modelling paste. And I'm just going to scrape that through with my card. I'm going to try not to have it too thick because I want it to dry fairly quickly. Ooh. I'm going to let the sun shine in the day. Make this darkness go away I'll paint with colors And I'll sing until my lungs give out mm -hmm. I'm gonna let the sun shine in the day And I will leave my windows open So that I can hear the sound of people talking And the wind blowing in the tree So this is not fully dry uh, but if I press my nail into it, I can see the lines. 
But what I'm going to do is to add some of this Colour Art Primary Elements Art Pigment in Caribbean Mist. Now, I've a feeling that this isn't made anymore, but you know, there are other kind of manufacturers of powders. So, mm, definitely got a bit of a kind of sea theme going on today. And the way I like to use these is just to kind of drop it on top, just anywhere. This will be more than I need. But I'm hoping, if this does as it's done previous occasions when I've used it, uh, the modelling paste will just actually grab a little bit of it. So I'm just going to wet it, just to get it activated. and just try and move it about a little. Now it won't fully take on the colour, but I just want to knock back the pure white, just a little bit. And this also has a bit of a shimmer to it. not wanting to rub it too hard because I don't want to flatten the little bit of height that I've got on that. I'm just going to pull that down over that. It's on top of acrylic so it won't grab entirely. But what it is doing is filling in those little white gaps that were there. So that's not a bad thing. Okay, so I think I'm happy with that just now. You can see it's kind of changed the colour from the, the bright white. And again, I'll just give that a quick dry. It's wet I'm just going to drop in a couple more pieces just to make it a little bit more intense in some of the areas So there's one more thing I might do to this, but I'm going to leave it just now because I do want it to dry a little bit more. Where the powder clumps, you know, you can still touch it and it comes off. But I realised after just looking at this, this isn't the one that I used last time. The one I used last time had a sand through it and that was the one that took ages to dry. But uh, you can get a similar effect with this as well. The other one was a textured gel paste, I think whereas this is a modelling paste. Anyway, I'm going to put this to the side to dry for a bit longer. As I said, I'm leaving the back just like that. 
I'm loving the way that looks when the light hits off it. And I'm going to start on item number two. So the other thing about the collab is that the things we send have to be capable... They, they, they have to have some sort of common theme to it. So that could be colour or texture or whatever. Or capable of being adapted in a way. So, yeah. I need to think about what I do next. So, for my second item, I've got here some recycled packaging paper. I always keep this stuff. I'm going to take this rough edge off it to begin with. But let me think. Take that first. So, this will be bigger than the envelope. But I'm thinking if I, I could fold it and it could go in something like that. So I think I'm just going to work on this full piece. I'm thinking about a gel printing again. I love this kind of colour. To me it lends itself more to the kind of earthy colours I was talking about earlier. But I've started with these colours so I'm wondering if there's something I could do on them now to kind of keep with the theme by way of colour. Hmm. Or would something in white, just as a contrast, and then Kerry could add to it whatever he thinks. I think I might just keep this in whites. But I'm going to do it on the gel plate and if we pick up any of this then that's fine. I don't know, that must have been paper stuck to it before. Gosh, I haven't cleared it off. I'm a mucky pup. Right. So I just remembered, I think this is called Polynesian. But this time I'm going to use some nested circles. I'm thinking, there is a wave stencil, but I'm just thinking, I don't know why I'm on a C theme today. But I've got all of these. And I think I might do two lots of the paper and see where I get to with that. Just want enough to cover the plate here. I've got loads of them. So this time I'm just going to use some PBO acrylic in titanium white. here. I'm going to let that dry a little bit and then I think I'm just going to come in with this piece and I don't mind if it overlaps a little. I'll put a colour down on it to hopefully lift that and then we'll see where that takes us. So I'm going to put this to the side to dry a bit more. I don't want to pull it too early. Meantime I'm bringing this piece back in 
just one more thing I want to do to this and that is I just want to touch over the top of these ever so slightly with some acrylic paint okay and this is in mermaid teal and it's a metallic and it oh gosh it's a while since I opened it oh well maybe we won't use this we'll see back in a minute once I force it open So this will need a stir. I think it's getting a bit lumpy in places. I've had it a while. So I'm actually just going to use my finger and just kind of drag it over in places. It's very lightly. So it's just tiny bits here and there and that just helps kind of disrupt the pattern a little bit so it just doesn't all look too much the same and that's the way I kind of like to create art. Right, back to the gel plate. So I'm just going to use these same three colours that I'd used before. And here's hoping this works. As I say, these two might overlap a little bit, but under other circumstances I would have put it on a separate piece of paper, but it's three items, so I'm trying to keep to, to that. So I'm just going to put it to the edge, and no more, hopefully. Now, this doesn't work back to the drawing board and this piece might just go in the scrap pile from whence it came. Ooh, we've got some nice wrinkles going on in this. Don't want to pull it too soon, don't want to leave it too long, make it a little wedge, mm, a little bit happening but not enough. Right, I'm going to leave this a little while and hope for the best. It's 
not lifting it yet. Right, meantime I need to think for a third item. Hmm, okay. I'm going to leave this. In fact, I might just stop and have some lunch. done it right leave it a little while so I've got lunch on warming and I've come back because I want to see how this is doing I'm impatient and that's where if a gel print's going to go wrong for me it's because of my impatience but I don't want to leave this too long so another little sneak peek okay here we go hmm not picking everything up but I think I've got quite a bit. Just going to keep pulling it carefully. That's a wrinkle from the paper. Gently does it. Gosh, I need to pull it hard, but not so hard that it tears. So actually, I'm quite pleased with the way that's turned out. I don't know what Kerry's going to make of all this. I just hope he can make something with it, but do like this. I'm definitely getting a sea vibe today. This is almost like pieces under the sea and that's just been the wrinkles in the paper. So yeah, I'm good with that. So now I will go and have lunch and think about my third item. And I do like the contrast between the two. And hopefully that will just all fold up nicely. Right, so I am fed and watered and I'm now thinking about my third item. So looking at what I've got so far, it's everything lands on the floor. We've got this piece of recycled cover. That I'm loving the colours of. We've got this piece of recycled paper. So we've got similar colours coming through. This bit done one way and this side done the other. But definitely got a theme going on with the colours. So with that in mind, I decided that I would have a rake through my fabric supplies. I don't have a lot of fabrics, I do have some though. One thing I came across was this piece of felt. I've had it a while. Uh, I think I was starting to make a journal from it a while ago and never got it finished, of course. So, I also came across a number of different scraps and a lot of these came from Love Me Blue. Who I've had a few items from over the years, so lots of different things. So I'm thinking that I could maybe do something where, again, to keep it as one piece, I could stitch some things onto here. Maybe slightly smaller than that. But again, keeping the colour of the kind of green theme. And this would be quite a good way to use up the scraps. Now there's things like this that are lovely, but I'd have to be careful sewing through. I'm, I'm at this point I can't decide whether to hand stitch, which you know I do very basic hand stitching, or whether to get the machine out and almost do a. I don't know what they call it. It's like a kind of quilting stitch, but I don't have anything that goes in between it to to actually quilt it. 
You see, there's some lovely pieces like this, and I'm thinking then that Kerry could either use it as one big piece or he could simply cut it up. I've got these as well, and these are beautiful. You know, old pieces of sari. That I certainly couldn't machine stitch. I'd have to hand stitch it and I'd be so slow. It would be nice to include something like that. Just keeping it in those colours. I think it's going to have to be these because I think I'm going to have to machine stitch. It's quite a nice emblem. I have used some of these before. I did boho paper dolls. Again, I'll link it below. Just in case you're interested, I used little scraps of this. Right, I think I'm going to play about with the placement and then decide. It's almost going to be like a, a fabric collage. So I'm going to play about with the, <coughs> excuse me, play about with the, the layout. And then we shall take it from there. How come the stars come to shine when it's dark? From so far away, show us where we are. What makes the sun go to sleep every night? And what's it dreaming of? in place and then sew it on the machine. There's every likelihood that the fabric will ruffle but maybe if I do do that kind of quilted effect it might just help it Flatten a little bit. Ouch. As fabrics go, this is quite ambitious for me. Because I 
Because like I say, I am not a sewer. Albeit, I do quite like working with some fabric from time to time. So, I'm wondering whether to sew round the shapes or try to make it a bit more free flow. I suppose I could do a bit of both. If I sewed round the shapes in white and then went more free flow with something else. I think the birds are disagreeing. Have I got enough pins in it to hold it in place? Probably not. Right, I'm going to dig my machine out and hopefully this works. Right, so I do not really know my way about a sewing machine. I've used it when making journals. I've actually altered a couple of things on it recently. But my problem is, and I'm sorry, you're not going to really be able to see this. My problem is I can thread it just. But when it comes to changing the spool, I have to look it up on YouTube all the time. So, uh, I'm hoping there's enough. It's black thread in there. And the thread I want to use is this one. It's got the different colours through it. Again, it's got the kind of yellows and greens. It's got a bit of a kind of blue. It's actually even got a bit of pink, which we'll, we'll pick up that. So, I don't know the effect of the black thread underneath and what that means, but I'm just going to go for it. So, back in a moment or two, I'll actually thread it. So I have a feeling I've missed something, but I'm going to give it a little bit of test run, just on a bit of paper. We'll see if this works. Drop the foot, bring that down, and away we go. Switch on. Do zigzag, so will we try a zigzag? Hmm. I don't know these things about tension and whatnot. Well, I know about tension, but not in terms of machine. So I quite like the zigzag, but I'm wondering if I should just do, do it in this stitch first, get them down, and then I can do the zigzag. Wish me luck. Goes nothing. See you on the other side.
Okay, the plan's not a bad one. The execution's something else, but all I've done is gone round the edges, which you might not really be able to see terribly well here. But I am seeing the different colours, which is good. I'm glad it's got that bit of pink which picks that up. So, when you look at it on the back, it's reasonably neat. A wee bit wonky where I forgot to put the foot down, but never mind. Now to decide on these. Oh, I do not know. I do not know. I'm thinking a zigzag, just to give it a bit of a look. Okay, we'll try the zigzag. So I think that worked okay. I think I tried to do this a few years ago on a boho journal cover. The one that I never got finished, the one that I think I bought this for. So I'm going to keep on doing that and then I might leave some little bits loose, you know, the fringes etc. But then I'll come back. So this is where we've got to. I've got these all done after a fashion. But I am still tempted, I've left a couple of little bits flapping, but I am still tempted just to do the kind of basic stitch in whatever way I can around this, trying to leave the flappy bits and it'll maybe just kind of hold it down in place a bit more. Ugh, the bobbin ran out. I now need to fathom how to do this. I need to get thread onto it and then I need to re-thread it. Oh. oh well, here goes. Is that it? No. That thread's in the wrong place. Is it? Wrong, wrong, wrong. Come on. Right. Down again. This way. Nope. <laughs> if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. YouTube, here I come. got it done. So let's take a look at what I'm going to be sending off to, to Kerry and 
you know, as I said, by the time this video goes out, the collaboration will already have taken place. I'll link back to my video for that and indeed to Kerry's video and indeed to the whole hop. I, I can't remember how many people's taken part. Would it be maybe 16? So do take a look. You know, two people paired up and, and swapping items with each other and then using what they get. So the only rule was that it fit in such and such an envelope and that either they were in some way coordinated or were capable of being coordinated by the person that receives them. So let's look at the three things I've made for Kerry. So this was the back of the old notebook, just the cover or front or back of it, can't remember which. And, you know, I've added some modelling paste to it through a stencil. I did some gel printing. I added some of the, the powder and then a tiny bit of a metallic on top. So this kind of led me in the direction of sticking with these colours. And I did a piece of recycled packaging paper. I did it in two ways. This will fold up. So the first was using the, the masks or stencils again around here. And then leaving that on the plate and using some paints in the same colours to, to pick them up. And the final piece, possibly the most challenging, was pulling some fabrics together. And I'm going to trim these edges just a little bit. I, I had a couple of errors, I'm not going to fib about it, and I think I've just had to go over them so it doesn't unravel. The idea for this, I don't know. Uh, it could be cut up. He can cut it up into as many pieces as he wants. He could cut out a tiny bit if he wants, down to him. Uh, but I don't know, I just kind of got that idea. I think I did try this once before with a journal cover. I'm not expert at sewing. I couldn't remember how to put the bobbin in, so I did have to look it up again. But, you know, that's okay. I don't use my machine so often that uh, well, I'm no expert in it. Just going to trim that edge mainly. And here. I thought this was just quite a good way of using up some scraps, though. So Try to leave that bit. If you didn't like that, you could cut that off. As I say, well, it's up to him what he does with it. Uh, and that will be the interesting thing. Uh, a bit of a challenge, perhaps. I don't know how he'll do. I know he'll do something good because he's brilliant at what he does. And he's very talented across a number of areas. And, of course, by the time you see this video, I'll have already had the things from Kerry and will have made something from what he sends. So, Kerry, if you're watching this kind of follow-up video, I do hope you enjoyed these. Uh, it was a pleasure making them for you. And, yeah, I'm actually, when I see them together, I'm actually quite pleased with them. So, thanks so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope this just gives you some ideas for maybe some of your art or, or craft projects. So, thanks very much. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. It helps the channel, just helps me just get seen uh, in more places on YouTube. So leave a comment if you'd like as well. That'd be great. Thanks so much. Bye for now.